I fear not the dark itself, but what may lurk within it. Welcome to Lurk, bringing you creepy, strange, and bone-chilling stories with your host, Jamie Jackson. Welcome to this week's episode. Just a quick reminder, tomorrow is the day. The Sasquatch Saturday event at Piney Run Park in Sykesville, Maryland happens tomorrow, June 24th, 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Just a heads up that we are getting some rain, much needed rain, over the next couple of days and there is a chance of rain for the festival on Saturday. It is being held rain or shine. We were informed that in the event of heavy rain or serious weather, vendors will be located in pavilions or in the nature center. So don't let the rain stop you. Still come out and see what they have going on. The event is highlighting Sykesville's very own Sykesville monster, which was a Sasquatch type creature. We covered it in episode 39, in case you want to go back and listen before coming out to the festival. Lurk will, of course, be there, so stop out and say hey. Now for this week's topic, we're heading to the Northwest, specifically the Pacific Northwest, to Oregon. We're going to be looking at the craziness that is Crater Lake National Park. And this is probably going to end up being a two-parter. I never really know until I start getting the notes all put together, but that's how it's looking right now. This all began with one small missing 411 case that I had heard about that bothered me for a couple of reasons. Turns out, after more in-depth research, Crater Lake has a weird vibe, similar to Mount Shasta. We covered Mount Shasta in episodes 31 and 32, in case you didn't listen to those or want a refresher. Crater Lake National Park is located in Oregon, as I said. It's in southern Oregon, to be specific, on the crest of the Cascade Mountain Range, about 100 miles east of the Pacific Ocean. It's about 250 miles from Portland, as another reference. Crater Lake National Park was established May 22, 1902. Crater Lake itself is 1,943 feet deep making it the deepest lake in America, and it's famous for its blue color. The lake water comes solely from snow or rain, as there are no inlets from other water sources. Because of this, no sediment or mineral deposits are carried into the lake, making it one of the cleanest and clearest lakes in the world. The lake was formed about 7,700 years ago, when Mount Mazama, a 12,000-foot-tall volcano, erupted and then collapsed, forming the basin for the lake. At Crater Lake, the average snowfall is 43 feet per year and is one of the snowiest places in the United States. That average snowfall, if you're wondering, is equivalent to getting 1.4 inches of snow every day for 365 days. The official winter season runs November to April but snow can linger into May and June. Crater Lake covers 21 square miles and is the third deepest lake in the world, and it was one time rumored to be bottomless for many years. Not really sure why they would think that it was bottomless, because I can't seem to think of how a lake on Earth could be bottomless, unless it connects to another bottomless lake on the exact opposite side of the globe. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a look at the important things my brain contemplates on a regular basis. Within the lake are three points of interest, for lack of a better term. It has two islands, Wizard Island, a volcanic cinder cone at the west end of the lake, and Phantom Ship Island, named because it looks like a ship, that is at the southeast end of the lake. Wizard Island is a mini-volcano with its own mini-crater lake, known as the Witch's Cauldron. The third thing of interest in the lake is known as the Old Man of the Lake, 
and it's an ancient hemlock tree that floats freely around the lake. The tree has been floating for over a hundred years. It floats completely upright, not on its side, and travels extensively around Crater Lake. It also sometimes travels surprisingly fast. And some people say that it can even control the weather. Scientists one time tied up the old man near Wizard Island, but the moment they did, the sky grew dark and a storm blew in. The scientists quickly released the old man and the sky immediately cleared. So it shouldn't be surprising to learn that Mount Mazama was important to the Native Americans in the area. Legend says that the fall of the mountain was caused by a brutal battle between the spirit of the sky and the spirit of the mountain. The destructive eruption signaled the end of the battle and many natives mourned the loss of the sacred volcano. In Klamath legend, there is the myth of Lao and Skell. Lao is a monster who dwells in Crater Lake and is said to be octopoidal and a dirty white color. Octopoidal is just a nerdy way of saying octopus-like. I don't know why they didn't just say he looks like an octopus and he's the dirty white color. Skell is also called Mink or Martin. The story goes that Skell and his friend Weasel were tricked by the beautiful but wicked daughter of Lao. She ingratiates herself with Mink or Skell and tears out his heart, literally. She then takes the heart to Lao's people at Crater Lake, who play ball with it. Weasel runs for help to the Klamath creator figure, who advises Weasel. Weasel, with the help of other allies, manages to recover Mink, or Skell's, heart, and Skell revives, but Lao carries Skell off to Crater Lake to cut him to pieces and feed him to his crawfish children. That would make Lao, everybody say it with me, the crawl dad. Sorry. Skell outwits Lao and slays him, cutting up Lao's body and pretending the pieces are his own body. Skell then feeds them to the crawfish. Finally, Skell throws Lal's head into Crater Lake. The crawfish recognize the head of their crawl daddy, I mean father, and scatter. The head becomes lodged in the lake and is now what is called Wizard Island. Another Klamath legend mentions a raging war between two great volcanoes, Mount Mazama and Mount Shasta. The Klamath and other Native Americans in the area were actually there to experience the eruption and collapse of Mount Mazama as shown in their oral tradition and in the artifacts that were found under the ash layer. Today the natives view Crater Lake as a realm inhabited by spirits of the dead that are dangerous to the living. The lake is only accessible by powerful shaman. Hunters who defied this and went to the lake were killed. The natives recognized the lake as a site of power and danger and fear the beings that are believed to live inside the waters. It's also seen as a doorway or crossroads between darkness of the below world. It's also believed that if a person stared too long at the lake's surface, they would be unable to look away. The lake has the power to mesmerize and trap people and lure them to their death. In 1947, a man and his wife went for a hike around the lake. When they reached the cliff, the man handed his wallet and keys to his wife and casually stepped off the cliff. He broke his leg, but then proceeded to throw himself into the water and drown. His wife said that at the time, he seemed to almost be in a trance. Back in 1853, three men went searching for a missing miner. The miner had gone missing while he was mining a secret gold mine in the area of Crater Lake. During the search, one of the searchers, a man by the name of Hillman, claimed he knew the location of the secret mine and the missing miner, and was leading the search party there when his, war when his horse just walked off the cliff. Hillman died. The gold mine is still secret, and no one has found it. If going missing or falling off a cliff are possible outcomes, I'm just going to let that mine stay a secret. 
There's also been some airplane crashes in the area of the lake. One involved a Grumman torpedo plane that crashed just after World War II. In 1970, Dave Panabaker worked at Crater Lake National Park as a seasonal ranger. He had heard about the crash of the dark blue Grumman F-6F Hellcat fighter that crashed just a month after World War II ended. The plane hit the ground hard, with the machine gun actually becoming embedded in the cliff. So Panabaker decided to head out on his day off to see the site of the crash. The hike was considered to be relatively easy. Despite the ease, Panabaker got lost. He sat down on a log to think about his options. Let me stop right here to say this is the right thing to do, as I've mentioned in other Missing 411 episodes. Do not wander around if you're lost. Stop where you are and consider your options. But back to Mr. Panabaker. While he's sitting there on the log, he began to feel that uncomfortable feeling that he was being watched. The feeling became stronger, and as he looked up, He locked eye sockets with a human skull under a nearby log. Panabaker managed to find his way out. I can imagine what finding human remains might do to motivate a person to find their way back to the trail. Not only did Panabaker find his way out, but he managed to bring the skull with him. It was eventually identified as 22-year-old Ensign Frank Lupo. Lupo was part of the squadron of seven Hellcats that hit bad weather, and when they came out of the clouds, there were only six. Tribal lore mentioned people who have been carried away on the wind, or who are powerfully propelled to swim to Wizard Island. I wouldn't want to swim in Crater Lake at all, though it is actually allowed in certain designated areas. There are strange creatures seen in the lake, and locals have seen them wash up on the shore. They are a mashup of multiple known animals, and some have even been described as animal-human hybrids. Some say the spirit of Skell himself, or should that be Lol, appears as a giant crayfish who drags people beneath the surface of the water. I wonder if there are some strange kind of gigantic crayfish in the lake. At a depth of nearly 2,000 feet, how exactly do we know what lives at the bottom? Multiple people have also reported seeing a dragon-like lake monster looming just beneath the water's surface around the island. Speaking of strange creatures, Sasquatch is also an inhabitant of the woods around the lake. There's a story of park rangers that followed a massive, shaggy, bipedal creature into the woods. The rangers turned back when the creature began to violently throw pine cones at them. And Wizard Island also has its mysteries, though that's probably not too shocking with a name like Wizard's Island. People have seen smoke come from Wizard's Island at night, and natives claim that this is the spirit of the island. Natives say that Wizard Island is the place where the souls of the damned live in the form of winged salamanders. Interesting that a winged salamander and a winged dragon are probably pretty close to appearance. Rangers sometimes see the glow of campfires on Wizard Island, but when the rangers go to investigate, no signs of fire or campers are found. One evening, Ranger Kerwin was patrolling the roads below the rim when she spotted ten people standing around a roaring fire, camping illegally in the forest, far from the designated campground. The ranger parked her car and entered the woods to contact the illegal campers, But when she neared the site, she could not find any people or campfire. Somewhat distressed by the camper's perceived behavior, the ranger got behind a tree and called for backup. When the other ranger arrived, the two searched all over, but still couldn't find any sign of the roaring fire or the ten campers. And of course, there are UFO sightings at Crater Lake. Because the story wouldn't be anything without it. We have ghosts, crazy monsters, secret gold mines, mesmerizing lake, and now UFOs. There are reports of UFOs flying over and out of the lake. 
on Tuesday, February 4, 1997, at 6.15 p.m., private pilot flying just south of Diamond Lake Junction, east of Crater Lake National Park, saw three disks speeding across the dark sky, pursued by several jet interceptors. There was also a report of a sonic boom that same evening that was so loud it set off car alarms. In October 2017, there was a sighting in broad daylight by pilots and radar on the ground. Pilots above Crater Lake were reporting a large white unidentified aircraft. You know that target south of the boundary there? The 0027 code moving very fast at 37,000 feet? A radar operator can be heard saying, Oh, look at that thing, replies the center controller. Uh, um, and you don't have anything on him? Sightings of the object continued for 30 minutes while United Airlines plane called in a large white plane. Officials took the sighting seriously, with F-15 fighter jets later taking off from Portland International Airport in a bid to investigate and intercept the object. The flying object mysteriously vanished. Lastly, before I end part one here, and I know this is a little bit of a shortened episode, but trust me, part two is going to be longer. I wanted to leave you with this little tidbit of information. In 1945, the lake began burping up bluish gray clouds of smoke or gas that mushroomed over the lake several times. In the 1980s, hydrothermal vents were discovered at the bottom of the lake. That, combined with several earthquakes that rocked the park, park residents in the 1990s, it suggests that the volcano might not be so inactive, though scientists think it would be a while before it were to erupt again. And that's going to do it for part one. In part two, we're going to be looking at two different missing 411 cases from Crater Lake, so make sure you tune in and listen next week. Don't forget, tomorrow is Sasquatch Saturday Festival, June 24th, Piney Run Park in Sykesville, Maryland, 11 a.m. until 3 p.m., rain or shine. And in August, we have the Bigfoot and Paranormal Expo in Reynoldsville, Pennsylvania. And September 30th is the Whitehall, New York Sasquatch Festival. Remember, you can find Lurk wherever you listen to your other favorite podcasts or at lurkpodcast.com where you can find a list of podcast episodes. And until next time, keep lurking.